Hello, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know we're right in the middle of a catamaran review series that we took at this year's Annapolis Sailboat Show. On the screen, I'm gonna throw up some images of the previous catamarans we've covered in previous episodes. If you haven't seen those episodes, definitely go back and check them out. We'll also make a playlist called Comparing Catamarans. You can check that playlist and watch us right from the beginning through the whole series. But I wanted to talk about the criteria that Janice and I are looking at because it might be different than what you're looking at. If you're planning to live in a house and just have a catamaran as your winter getaway floating cottage, so to speak, you probably can handle a much smaller catamaran than the one we're probably looking at. Mostly because we have to factor in that everything we own in life is gonna be on this one boat. So we need probably more storage. Definitely we're gonna have every toy like stand up paddle boards and maybe scuba equipment, scuba compressor, all that has to fit on this catamaran. So we're looking into factors like how much storage capacity does this boat have? We're not so impressed by catamaran speed. You know, some of the fast cats are great. If you have that as your winter getaway, you don't need a lot of storage capacity, but you wanna get from A to B quick because you have a limited vacation time. We're on a kind of more slow pace uh, plan where when we're retired, we're gonna move slowly from island to island and about 90% of our time will be at anchor. So it's more important that we have the space and the comfort than we have that cat that can really fly. So keep that in mind, it might be different for you. As you can see in this episode, we're going on to the Sayona 47 foot. And this is by far our favorite Fontaine Bajot. It is the perfect size for a liveaboard catamaran. But before I talk about that boat, we wanna talk about price because if I don't mention price at some point in every episode, people send me multiple comments asking why I didn't talk about price. I've always been reluctant because these production boats come pretty much with nothing from the factory. Everything you have to add on to make it a liveaboard will add up to a lot of money. You're gonna need generators, you're gonna need water makers, you're gonna need a lot of solar power, you're gonna need probably a wind generator, and you're probably gonna to wanna to upgrade the batteries to something better than the standard lead acid batteries that it comes with. So I have no idea how much money you're gonna spend after the cost of the boat from the factory to get it to be a full liveaboard, so I've been reluctant. But I will do the legwork and I will go on Yacht World and show you what some of these boats are selling for now. As you can see, a brand new Sayona goes for about $865,000. Now you do see one that's one year old that drops down to about 700. We're thinking of getting a used one, probably about five year old used one of whatever model we end up picking, mostly to avoid all that depreciation that happens in those first five years and hopefully the previous owner has put in some upgrades along the way. We're gonna do our best to avoid those ex-charter boats. Five years of being an ex-charter boat will mean that thing's been used and abused. So we're hoping to find a owner's version, privately owned, hopefully gently used boat. Now let's check out our walkthrough review of the Sayona 47. Okay, so we are on the Sayona 47. You can see the helm situation. We really love these hard biminis. In the long run, it's well worth having them because they won't deteriorate from the sun and the salt. And they've got, of course, the modern hatch lids. There's not a seating area here. You can't quite make out what Janice is saying, but she has a good point. They probably didn't install seating at the front of the boat because they have the extra seating on the top, on the cabin top, but it would have been nice to have seating in both areas. Sometimes sitting in the front is nice when the sun is directly behind the boat for shade. As you can see, there's nice wide passageways along the side of the boat and plenty of room for solar on the top, even with the seating up there. The first thing to notice is the hydraulic dinghy lift at the back. That's a nice feature. And then look at this seating area. A big table and some beautiful faux wood flooring. It's sort of a rubberized texture and it's really great. It gets, you can get rid of spills quite easily. If it's just the white gel coat, it tends to stain and show marks a little easier. This stuff is soft on the feet. It's probably an upgrade. I, I'm sure it's quite a bit of money to do this, but I think it's highly worth doing. You could imagine sitting around that table. Beautiful. The next thing to notice is the sliding glass door slide so far over that you actually have a kitchen pass through from the kitchen counter to the outdoor counter. It's great for passing drinks to people that are sitting on the outside. It's a nice feature. Now let's go inside and check out the galley. Oh, that looks very nice. I have a funny feeling Janice is gonna love this. Let's see what she says. Here's the galley. It's got double sinks and the oven is up here. It's got a more ample stove top, but tons of storage back there. Tons of cabinetry. It has a, its little island here with its garbage hole. And uh, the sitting area is also beautiful, but I mean, the table, the table is a little bit inadequate. Okay, I'm now in the master stateroom, and this is the head for the master. Owner's version, it's the entire hall of the boat. And as you can see, your toilet is at the very front, at the bow of the boat, which is interesting in its own room. And then just like the last 
on Tampa Joe. It's got this kind of U shape to go around this bend to get to the shower and there's no door on the shower. It's kind of an interesting thing. And of course you have this hallway with all this storage back to your queen size bed. It's quite nice. Lots of light for sure. Not enough shelving for things beside your bed that you would want to reach from your bed. Uh, there's that little tiny lip on that, on that shelf. That's about all you've got to hold stuff there when the boat's moving. Now let's see what Janice thinks of this owner's cabin. Yeah. So, uh, Hi. 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 the biggest dealer in the world. Okay. Ah, this is the master. Here is the master head. And it has a huge, lovely sink. And the shower is the open concept on the one end. So, so that makes it kind of long and narrow. I'll stand in the water closet so that you can get an impression. And then the water closet. The water closet is in the peak here. With storage, giant storage in the back. Huge cabinet trailer. The master bed. Christmas. Christmas. And now I'm heading down into the two guest cabin side. As you can imagine, the stern cabin on the guest side is exactly the same layout as the owner's cabin, you know, bedroom wise. It's good space, decent light. Did find that the hallway to get through was fairly narrow and that's because they're trying to give you as big a head as possible. There's two heads, one for each cabin. And so therefore you lose out on hallway space. As you can see, Janice is filming right beside me. So let's cut over to her camera and see what she thinks of these rooms. Hey, cabin. Is this your boat? Beautiful. It's nice. It's a good cabin, a good, good sized cabin. It's got a TV here behind uh, Craig's head. And uh, it has this cabin, or sorry, its head, and it has a separate shower in the head. It's pretty cute. The head in the forward cabin is very similar in the layout and size. Has it here. Cabinet. This is a crew cabin, so it's accessible through this hatch, or sorry, through this doorway or through the hatch above. And then it's a beautiful bed, very accessible on both sides. And the last thing I want to show you on this boat before we give you our final review is the helm situation. It is a sport seat. This is the kind of style we like so that you have the ability to talk from the helm to those sitting in the outdoor salon or even in the kitchen, the galley. You'll have uh, easy ability to see them and speak to them. And then you've got this beautiful seating area up top as well as this beautiful seating area down below. It is a beautiful boat, no doubt about it. Definitely one of our top options so far. So let's hear our final thoughts on the Seona 47. Okay, now we just got off the Seona 47 behind us here. What did you think? That was lovely. Yeah, that's big. I really liked it. Yeah, not much to complain about. I mean, had, I mean nothing is perfect. Yeah, nothing's perfect. <laughs> nothing's perfect, but it had a lot of the features. It has yeah. a double sink that we like uh, for, for cleaning your dishes, which is a must. And there's obviously, when you're going from a 42, which is the last episode, mm -hmm. to a 47, there's the a big, galley was great. It had big a jump up in space. In the galley. Yeah. And uh, was, there was no big dining table inside. Yeah. I, I don't know. If yeah. I guess they expect you to eat outside. Maybe it's a, a, a leaf you can pop in and out. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's a huge area outside to eat, and I guess they just assume if you have a boat like yeah. this, you're probably going to eat outdoors more than you eat indoors. And it has the hard, as you can see right over here on my shoulder, the hard bimini over the helm, which yeah. is a nice feature. Most of the boats don't. No. They have you know, some umbrella material above your helm, and that it's going to deteriorate from the sun and the salt water. So it's definitely a nice feature to have. Hmm. The master cabin was awesome, and it had everything. It didn't really have a couch, and I couldn't get a very good look at it because there were people in yeah. there the entire Busy. time that wouldn't move. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. it was still nice to say. The, cat, the, the thing about the their new way they do the shower in there, I I don't prefer that over the shower in the peak. Oh, that be, that it's that a you, long, narrow yeah. shower, and yeah. I have like I foresee like I would bang that this this much room really. Yeah, yeah it's long. Yeah, long and thin. Work yeah. with length. I work with this circumference, so yeah. 
I would be bumping my elbows. That, yeah. that didn't. I didn't think about that. That wasn't an improvement. It was something new. It's me. Yeah. Not an All right. But still, overall, a decent boat. Yeah. We'd bite one of the options. Maybe. Okay. There was an added, you know, one for sale. Used at a good price. Yeah. We'd we'd go for it. Good. All right. On to the next one. Okay. The only boat that we haven't gone on is this Ipanema 58, but we've been on it before in previous years. It's just crazy, crazy yeah. huge, to the point that it's not even realistic. It's not a consideration. No. At all. This is a crude charter boat. That's what it's designed for. Or a very wealthy couple that has paid crew on board. So that's not us. So we are not gonna. We're not going to take the time, and also you have to get on this boat by invitation, like appointment only. So it takes forever to get on this boat. As you can see, there's nobody on it. Every other boat is packed, but they only take on two people at a time. But it is very uh, luxurious. I'll give you that. Anyway, that's it for now. Bye. We really did like the Sayona 47. It's just about the perfect size for a liveaboard catamaran. It's got plenty of space, plenty of storage. Lots of outdoor seating, ticks a lot of the boxes. If we were gonna get a Fontan Peugeot, this would probably be at the top of our list. In the next episode, we're gonna get onto one of those more boutique builders. It's called the Balance 451. It's 45 feet long, which is about the right size for us. But as you can see from the shape, it's definitely sleeker and more designed for speed. So stay tuned to see what we think of that cat. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button beside it so that you're notified when the next episode is up. There are tons and tons of catamarans in the future. Some of them I'm showing you on the screen right now. Some of note is we really like the Majestic 530, we like the Maverick 400, and we like the Exquisite X5, but there are plenty of other boats we like as well. So hopefully you stay tuned for that. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.